Well, hey everyone. Um, you might notice that things are a little different in this video. This is a raw video. I want to just dive right in and teach you more on painting this portrait of Cora, this beautiful girl we're painting for the portrait painting challenge. And this is raw. I'm just going to basically do this video without any editing, uh, without any fancy subtitles or um, you know cropping of, of when I zoom the camera in and out. Uh, we're just going to keep this uh, pretty fresh and uh, that way it's going to, you know, I won't have to spend so much time on the editing part. I can just concentrate on sharing the techniques to help you paint a portrait you can be proud of. Sound good? So that's what we're going to do here and it'll take, now yeah, we'll spend about a half an hour or so um, just showing you some more things here. I, I Honestly, I really want you to be able to get this technique. Um, I've seen some people struggling in the Facebook group. Um, and I, of course, I understand it's your first time portrait painting, many of you. And uh, it, it's a challenge. You know, it's a challenge to learn this, this new technique of, of glazing and, you know, getting the right mixtures of uh, pigment to matte medium and knowing what colors to use. And then what happens if things are blotchy? Um, I really want to help you with that. So um, I'm just going to do this uh, raw video here for about a half an hour and uh, just make that available to you here. I hope you enjoy. Um, and then also to let you know, um, there's a Facebook Live training, a Facebook Live class that I'll be doing um, 10 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time on Monday, May the 3rd. So if you're seeing this past that point, you missed it. But uh, if you're watching this um, ahead of that, you can catch that live uh, class that I'll be doing uh, basically, it's called What Next, and we're just going to be doing some questions and answers, um, me doing some demonstrations to help you when you feel stuck in your portrait painting, specifically with the one we're working on here. So you'll want to check that out in the uh, Realistic Acrylic Portraits Facebook group. If you're signed up for the challenge, you know, you have a link to that group. Uh, go ahead and sign up for the challenge if you haven't done that, because then I'll send you all the good stuff, like the reference photo, uh, the the with the grid on it and the palette layout guide, the supplies list, everything you need to paint along with us. Um, anyway, so I don't want to take too much time here talking about that, but but join that, uh, and, and I'm sure you're going to benefit from that, being able to do the uh, live questions and answers and getting the help you need to finish your portrait well. But let's dive in here with a word of prayer, and then we're going to get started. Father, I ask a blessing here. Help me to just continue to teach how to paint this portrait well. And I really pray for the students that are, you know, they're just struggling with the portrait painting process. Uh, it, it's important, you know, to be able to use this gift you've given us. And uh, so many different dreams and aspirations of doing commission portraits, of uh, doing, uh, you know, paintings of, of grandchildren, um, putting their work in galleries, uh, just doing portraits that would encourage others and and capture special moments for people. I mean, so many different goals. Lord, I pray you'd bless each and every student watching, but especially those that are feeling uh, a little overwhelmed or unsure or stuck. I pray that this would give them extra clarity, extra help. Bless them, Lord. Bless this session here in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I've got my palette with some fresh matte medium on it. And again, I'm going to scroll the camera in. At this point, I don't have a big crew. <laughs> uh, well, it's COVID-19. I don't think I could anyway, even if I did have a crew. But uh, I'm just going to zoom the camera in here. No, no editing. And what we're going to do is just add some additional shading to her hair. I want to really show you how to do that. Um, and then also, you know, just dial in some of the forms and features here in the rest of the face. So. Let's zoom in here. And if you're in the All Access membership, of course, you're, you're getting this as a bonus video, plus all the, uh, the many bonus videos we'll be doing. Um, but uh, this will just kind of take you naturally between Lesson 6 and Lesson 7. So um, I am going to grab this flat brush here. And I just want to kind of tone in her hair a little bit. Um, so again, we're working in these larger areas to smaller areas. Okay. 
and we're going to take some raw umber dark, of course, my favorite color. Now, I think you can see this here on the palette, and I really want to show you what's going on. All right, so we just take that little bit. Here we have the matte medium right there, and we're just going to brush that in. You know, just really you have to use a lot of pressure to get that off your bristles and get it swirled into the matte medium. You almost tap it in. Um, and that way you won't have streakiness. Now we also want to grab some burnt sienna. All right, so here's the mixture that we've got going on for that. And those two colors together should work pretty well. So we're going to apply that. Now I'm going to show you on the white card what that looks like. Grab a fresh white card here. And that's what it looks like. So it's still pretty translucent. And again, we want to think of the concept here of filling in this entire area. All right, we're going to fill in this entire area here. Um, and I think with that, it's going to uh, it's going to be really nice. And we'll just apply this glaze right on the top, just add a little more warmth to the hair in general. So it just go, goes over the whole thing, and it's just going to basically extend a little bit past that part in her hair, and then it's going to go over the side. We want to make sure we extend that warmth everywhere, even down to these little locks on the side. And we're going to extend it downward as well. I'm going to, just going to use the tip of my brush, and I'm going to bring some of that color into this little, this little lock on the side here, that little strand that's kind of floating over on her neck. Now we flow this color down into the hair flowing over her back and then across her, well, her shoulder first and then lower back. See how that works. And let's take this same glaze and just yeah, add a little bit of that to her forehead. I'm going to thin it out though. Okay, that was a little harsh. A little too strong. Let's thin it out with some matte medium. Just ever so slightly bring that down into her forehead area. Just barely graze the surface. Be careful. If, it, if it's looking too dark on her forehead, then just leave it be. I missed that with the camera. Yeah, I just brought this down a little bit onto the forehead here. Um, just to get that slight bit of the turn of form where you can see there's a little more of a highlight right there. <clears throat> All right, and I'm going to take a smaller brush. I'm going to take the, let's see here, yeah, this one, the size, size 14. And we're just going to use the same glaze. I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson to the mix. the same glaze. Let's show you what's going on here. So a little bit of a lizard and crimson and we just work that in. Really get a nice even distribution of the colors. So that would be a lizard and crimson plus raw umber dark and burnt sienna. And then let's uh, test this out on the white card. That's what that looks like. I'm going to apply this on the left side of her face. 
We need to get some more reddish tints to that side, that's important. I'm going to bring it up about this far because up here on the forehead it's a cooler tint. And then we're going to add this little glaze here and here right around her eyes. And I just put a little bit down here on the lower part of her cheek and chin area. And even just put a little bit here. Just a little bit here under her lip area. So this is a challenging painting because we have all these nuances we're trying to achieve but you know her skin has to look so smooth so if you're painting um, you know if you're painting like we did the Larry portrait if you guys remember the Larry portrait um, he had obviously he was much older you know a, a middle-aged or, or older man and so there are a lot of angles on his face um, totally different thing though when you're painting a little girl and you have to get that really smooth gradation. So this is a challenge. Um, and I just encourage you to stick with the process even though you might be hitting some roadblocks. Um, the paint is not doing quite what you want it to do. Maybe it's setting up a little fast. It's getting blotchy. But if you stick with it, don't give up. You'll be able to paint a portrait um, really that you probably would be surprised you were able to do. And so I'd really encourage you just to stay with the lessons here um, and, and I'm going to continue to show you as much as I can. Now um, at this stage what we want to do is work into the background a bit more so let's darken that. Zoom out just a bit. And I'm going to put a little fresh matte medium here, pull up that large flat brush again. And let's take some uh, ultramarine blue. And a little bit of Indian yellow. And we're going to mix these two together. A little more ultramarine blue in the mix this time. Make sure I have that on camera. And mostly ultramarine blue at this point. So you have to make sure that the mixture doesn't get too vibrant. If you have too much Indian yellow on it, it's, it, it you might have a really yellow background and I don't want you to get scared by that. But here, let's take the white card. And this is what it would look like. It's kind of a hunter green. You see that? It's uh, not too scary. And when that goes on there, that's going to look really nice. So. So let's do that. It's got to be pretty translucent. Don't go too dark at this point. You know, really try to make it look like I have it here on the white card. Um, really go for, you know, 70% uh, matte medium to 30% paint. And test it out. If, if it's not looking the way you want it to, then have your rag handy and just, just wipe it off. I'm going to start in the dark corner, that way if I don't like what I see, it's going to be really easy to wipe that off and try again. So we're going to apply this here, it should make a little bit of a difference. And we're going to 
try to do some brush strokes in different directions. Most of mine have been vertical to this point. Let's do some uh, horizontal brush strokes. Sometimes you have to start vertically, but it's the finishing brush strokes that count. Try to get it up to the edge of her clothing as much as possible without going over. Okay, now we're going to finish off with some brush strokes going horizontally, but you can have them at slight angles. It, it makes it look more random that way. It gives it more of a, a painterly feel. So I don't just go straight across. I do kind of have some slight angles here. Always keep that wet edge. All right, so I apply it vertically and I go across horizontally. Again, don't overbrush it. All right, now let's go to the next section, just like painting a wall. You don't want to keep brushing over and over the same area or you have lap marks as you're using a brush roller. So you just kind of keep it flowing. Again, now we just use a lighter pressure, firm pressure at first to get the paint up there, light pressure to smooth over it. Again, just like house painting. And if you've done that before, and you've learned the correct technique, that's how they'll teach you how to do it. Okay, and now we can bring this in to the other side. Now we'll just uh, kind of show you the, the brushwork a little more. Okay, so again, different brush strokes vertically, horizontally, slightly diagonally, going vertically, finishing up with these crisscross horizontal diagonal strokes. Notice the angles, they're not at 45 degrees, they're probably more at about 20 to 30 degrees on each angle. Vertically, and then diagonally horizontally. That gives us a nice even distribution of paint. So now we have a really strong green color in the background and you know, arguably it might be a little stronger than what we want but um, that's okay because it's much easier to tone down luminosity than add it in. So if I want to tone it down I just lay off of using um, Indian yellow in the mix for the next glaze. It uh, gives it a little bit of warmth. Okay, we'll zoom out. So that's what we have right now. And let's see, how are we doing with time? I can, I can show you a little bit more here. Um, let's, let's work on the lace, but before we do that, I want to define this edge of uh, the background against her clothing and her arm. I'll show you that. Let's just kind of zoom in down here. Some people in the Facebook group have asked uh, when I'm going to paint the skin tone for that area and not yet. I, I've been holding off on that and there's a reason why. And The reason why is because if you look at the reference photo the value for her arm is lighter than the background. And if I add the color to her arm before the background gets dark enough, it's going to throw off the value structure in the painting. And I'm always giving value, that is that range from light and dark, more importance than color. And a lot of times, you know, artists when they're beginning in portrait painting, they, they have those two uh, there's two elements inverted in their mind. They give way too much focus to skin tones and color, but not enough focus to, not enough importance to the values. Values are just so much more important. So that's why I'm leaving this area. I don't know if you can see that. That's why I'm leaving this area here. It's gray right now, but I've just, at this point, I think gotten the the values in the background dark enough that I can now um, add some of the skin tone color in. Because now I know that that color here on her arm is not going to compete 
with the value of this. Does that make sense? So, so this is going to be um, a little bit lighter, and uh, that's that's how it needs to look. So, the other thing to keep in mind too is the color of that skin tone will not be nearly as intense as what's up on her face. It's darker. It's um, down towards the bottom of the image. It's not spotlighted. It's going to be almost grayish. It'll just be a warm gray color. That's it. Okay, let's do some work on the lace with the time we have left. Maybe about uh, five to ten more minutes. And we're gonna, just going to move this up a bit. So, we'll take some burnt sienna and raw umber dark. A little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm going to mix them together. I'll show you the color that I have going on here. There's many different mixtures you can use to achieve the same result, by the way. Just like, you know, I, well, I hate to use this metaphor because this is not really recipes per se, but, uh, you know, when you're making an apple pie, there's many different ways you can do it, right? I mean, you can use cinnamon, you can use cinnamon and nutmeg, you can use cinnamon, nutmeg, um, and cloves, you can use allspice, I mean so many different kinds of flavors you can use, different seasonings, spices to put in there. Um, so there's, there's different colors you can choose on your palette here to arrive at that same mixture. So, it's uh, like that a lot of areas of life, not all areas though, in some areas of life uh, you, you can only take one road to get to a certain destination. You know, just like with eternity, you can only take the road of Jesus Christ to get to heaven. But in this aspect here, many different colors can get you the same mixture on your palette. And um, I'm going to just kind of work into her skin tone, or sorry, not the skin tones, but the skin tones behind the lace. Let's make sure I have the camera where it needs to be. And uh, we're going to just fill it in a little bit on this side. I need some more red, so I'm going to take just a bit of alizarin crimson, put that into the mix. Let's show you on the white card what this looks like. It's actually pretty dark. All right, so we're maybe almost 50% not quite 50% opaque, I would say maybe 60% uh, matte medium, 40% pigment. Um, it's, it's pretty dark, but when I give those ratios out, I mean it's not an exact, it's not an exact amount, I'm just estimating. Really what you want to do is you want to base it off of what the glaze looks like on the white card. Alright, so it should, it should really look like this. But it, you can see it is pretty dark. So we're just going to put these little glazes right inside some of these spots on the lace. Let's zoom in there. And we want to put them in certain precise locations. Now I don't like that brush that I was using. Let's grab this one. This is a little higher quality. Has a little better edge on it. This is a size 10. Size 10, fine touch. Again, from that wonderful set that you can buy at Hobby Lobby for like $15 for a whole set. I love it. I love this set. This is fantastic. Look at that. All that for $13.99. Can't beat it. Okay. So just want to, again, put these little glazes in. So this color, you know, shouldn't be too intense. It should be kind of a um, brownish gray or, you know, not a super intense brown. It, it's a brown that has a little more of a reddish tint to it, but you don't want it to be too vibrant, too uh, strong because you know, this color is behind lace, behind this tulle netted fabric, and that cools it down because there's actually, you know, a network of little um, 
kind of white crisscross patterns going over the skin tones. But again, I'm just trying to get this uh, color in a few key areas. In fact, I think it's still a little too warm. Let's add just a bit of ultramarine blue um, because it's just it's not quite looking as real as I want. So here we have the new color. I'll show you on that white card. It's a little cooler in tone. Let's try that. It's a little closer. Try to get something in between the two. Let's try this. Okay, that's better. And a little bit of alizarin crimson added. Here we go. Now this is what we have. See that? So this is the newest color. I, I do try a lot of different mixes and I, I don't want to you know, just gloss over this so you can see it here. Again, this is the first try, second try, third try, and then this is the one I'm going to use right there. See, it's like this one up here, but it's just a little bit cooler in tone. Just a little bit cooler in tone, less, less chromatic intensity. It has that reddish tint, but it's you know, a little more to the grayish side. So, let's, let's try that. I'm not afraid of uh, trying a lot of times before I get it right. And even then, it's not to say I have it absolutely perfect. That's okay, because I have more opportunities to add more glazes to get this closer to perfection. And I'm not saying I'm going to achieve perfection, but I am aiming for it. Um, now, I'm going to just add these little pockets of color. Really try to get these different effects here. So I have to make sure I keep this within the camera. Down here, this should be a little bit darker. That fabric is folded in just a bit. And then I'm going to darken this side, this side, Now I'm not going to do these glazes up on top, all right? So right here, again, we have some fabric there. It's maybe an undershirt, but because of that, you're not seeing her skin tones through there. So therefore that has to be gray. So I'm not putting this color in there. I'm just putting it below this line. Let's see, I'm going to add a little bit of this glaze right in here, and we're going to establish a bit of a darker tone in that shape. Eventually I can refine some of these shapes. I did sketch it pretty loosely, but I'll be able to add in the precise forms as I go along here, as I paint. just a little bit of the glaze here on the right side. As I can see that needs to be darker. Right there. So I'm really studying that reference photo. You want to look at that um, half the time. You know, always be looking at the reference photo and painting what you see and not what you think you see. So again, I'm just adding a few little nuances to these areas. So some, some of the areas are darker than others. So if I can just pass one bit of knowledge on to you, don't make the mistake of shading in all these areas here at the same level of darkness. I'm intentionally, I did do that initially, but I'm going on top and putting 
some little dark pockets here, there, and some key areas. Not just where I feel like doing it, but according to what the reference photo tells me to do. What I see in the reference photo as looking uh, darker in certain spots. And that's going to give it nuance. What it's going to do is it's going to portray the idea of the fabric and areas being wrinkled. And the farther it, away it is from her skin, and depending on how the light shines on it, some areas are going to be very light, but the areas that are closer to her skin and then where there's some uh, wrinkles that are kind of turned away from the light source, those will be much darker. But again, I'm just following what I see in the reference photo and uh, you know, guiding you to do the same thing. So that's where we're going to stop right now. Just zoom out and so, you know, we did a little more work here in a half an hour and again this was just a raw session just to um, help you out. I want to make sure that you have as much instruction as you, you can to be able to paint this portrait successfully. Now in the All Access membership there are a lot of bonus videos I'm uploading there um, so again I'm not going to be able to show the entire process here on YouTube it's just way too many videos to put here on YouTube um, but uh, in the All Access membership, um, like I said, you will be able to see basically the entire process. You know, this could take 20 to 30 hours, I'm estimating, to paint this portrait. Um, and I think pretty much every minute of the painting process will be there in the All Access membership. But I want to help you as much as I can here by, by doing this additional uh, raw video. Again, there's nothing fancy, no music, no subtitles. I hope this has been of a help to you. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Many of you that are watching are already signed up for the Portrait Painting Challenge. Again, I want to say thank you. Thank you for taking uh, your time uh, and trusting me to teach you to paint a portrait. It means a lot to me. Thank you for all of your encouragement in the Facebook group, via email, in the comments here. Um, and I just really, really want to see you paint a portrait that you can be proud of. And then when you do it one time, I know you can do it again and again and again, and your skills are going to just keep elevating. And uh, it, it could take you to many different places, doing commissioned portraits, portraits of your grandchildren that you can give as beautiful gifts, um, painting portraits of renowned people, um, you know, maybe that you would end up showing in a, in a gallery or an art show. Or just painting for the sheer joy of it, which is a worthy goal in and of itself. Whatever the case is, thank you so much for watching. God bless. We'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, so that will be um, lesson number seven coming out very soon, uh, which will be next week. And, and then, of course, don't miss the Facebook Live session where I'll be doing some more uh, painting like this, showing you how to overcome some struggles in your painting, answering questions demonstrating, you know, as you ask your questions, I'll, I'll show you how to do it. Um, so that'll be coming up on May 3rd at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time as I'm recording this video. So anyway, thank you so much. God bless. We'll see you in the next video.